And we're live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Bigfoot Odyssey. This is Sunday Encounters. Good to see everyone here. Hope everyone's had a, a fantastic weekend. Uh, we just did a members-only live show with Christopher Noel. If you're not a member, it's really easy to join. Uh, if you don't have iOS, you should see the word join right down beside the subscribe button. Uh, if you have iOS, what you can do is go to the Bigfoot Odyssey homepage, copy the link to the channel, not to any particular video, but the link to the channel, paste it in your Safari and type forward slash join. And that should bring you to the members sign up. It's $2.99 a month. And what we do with that money is buy swag to give back to the members. We don't, I don't keep any of that. So, and plus you get the extra members content. So, and we appreciate everybody that's joined. Um, we just gave away four more shirts, but if you become a member after that, you can always go back and watch the members only shows that we have done with Vic Cundiff, um, Wes Germer, Christopher Noel so far in the community tab, you'll be able to find all that stuff there. So, uh, well for this show, I'm your host, Carrie. With me, as always, the lovely producer of all these shows, Daniela. How are you, dear? I'm doing good, thank you. Doing good. And uh, I'll tell you what, Kevin, it's such a, you're an amazing sport just for coming back and, and not being discouraged by, you know, some of the comments in the last one. For the most part, I would say 99% are very good, very encouraging. And, you know, for what we're doing here, and this is what I would say to anyone we would prefer to give people encouragement. If you have something encouraging to say, make a comment, leave a comment, hit that thumbs up, hit the thumbs down. If you want to, there's probably 12 people that hit the thumbs down before the show ever even starts. So, you know, there's that, <laughs> there's a few of those mentalities out there, but, um, I would, that's what, that's what we would suggest to anyone is if you got something encouraging to say to someone to do that, if you don't have anything good to say, you know, why say anything at all? You know, or just say it about us. You know, if you got something bad to say, plenty of people. One guy said, I come here for the throat clearing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all me. It's all me. I've got first, I don't know, every time since I've come out here, I got this thing in my throat. I, have throat. I try to turn the mic off to do it, but it doesn't always, it's not always, it's, it's usually when I'm saying something. So that happens. But anyway, we're going <clears> to <throat> jump right into this. So just do it again. See, clear the old throat. Kevin you've had a lot of amazing things happen to you uh, as it pertains to these beings. Um, do you want to just, you know, I talked about this before. I'm going to try my hardest to just shut up and not say anything and let you just go through. So I'm going to leave it to you, how you want to put it out there and go over what you want to, if you want to do all over again, perfectly fine. It's all up to you how you want to do this. Well, I think I would, like to start with 95 and just go through everything that happened okay. you know that year um but i would like to say thank you to everybody and i think you guys have the greatest big food. anything other than that would just be conjecture nope. okay. that's my fault <laughs> anyway i was i was saying that i think you you guys have the best uh subscribers anywhere in my opinion just really good people Anyway, and yeah, I think so. Anyway, in, in 95, um, we had uh, come out there uh, without the hammock that year. And, and I asked my buddy, I said, why aren't you bringing the hammock? And he said he didn't feel like it was worth it. Now, I think that he had some some negative experiences and i think that's why he didn't bring it so i wanted to clarify that point before i even got going on the 95 thing uh but in 95 um uh, we went out as usual first week in uh bow season and uh we were real quick, real quick kevin i'm sorry i said i wasn't gonna interrupt do you want to just tell everybody where where this is yeah. and all yeah that maybe missed the last one yeah, we went up to Apalachicola eight years total, uh, 84 through 89, and then uh, 94 and 95. So in 95, it was the end of, you know, year for us because it was so, 
uh, crazy. And, and that's what I wanted to go over, you know, tonight. So in 95, we saw, well, let me back up a little. Uh, we were a few days into our hunt and we hadn't seen one deer, not one. And that was unusual. You know, it was just nothing going on, not even squirrels. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, I'd never seen anything like it out there. Usually it's, it was active. So anyway, a few few days into our hunting out there, uh, we, we were in a morning hunt, and we usually went out about, I'd say about 4, 4.30 in the morning, and we stayed until about 10, and then came back and usually drove around or took it easy, you know, ate lunch, whatever. So uh, that third or fourth day into our hunting season it was extra quiet nothing going on i mean a beautiful morning nice and sunny y you would think everything would be out birds squirrels you know deer everything but there was nothing as usual for the last few days we didn't see a thing and i guess it was about an hour after sunrise so it must have been about 8:30 uh, and let me just describe how we're set up in the camp, how we're uh, hunting. We were hunting on the perimeter of the campground because it was a nice open area. And we could see, I could see 300 yards, uh, pretty much almost 360, you know, in front of me. So uh, my friend, he hunted about 100, over a little over 100 yards from me. I couldn't actually see him, but he was, you know, he was in the same clearing as I was. So anyway, um, getting back to the morning, it was about 830. I'm looking around waiting for a deer to come out. And I see two does come popping out to my right. So about two o'clock uh, position. And it's about 250 yards away and they come popping out and they're running and i'm like this is weird why are they running well about 15 yards or so or maybe less from back behind them was this what i thought was a guy in black running after them chasing after them and at first i'm like what what the heck's this guy doing and where'd he come from you know we're out in the middle of nowhere 600,000 acre national forest and this guy's out there in all black you know running after two does i just at first i was like what is he doing where did he come from so as i'm watching this you know event uh the deer are running through the the clearing and through the the palmettos and they get to the clearing and he's running after them. And the running motion is just so sh sh strange, very, very strange. Um, he's leaned forward, his head's cocked back just a little bit to compensate for his upper body being forward. And his legs were like a blur. And his arms were hanging to his sides, just kind of moving, just kind of swaying with his body movement, but not really, you know, like a, a normal runner would, you know, kind of pump it, pump arms. Uh, so it looked really strange. And I'm like, this guy's really running weird. There's something weird with this guy. So I'm watching him and then they get into some palmettos and he drops down to a crawling motion I'm like wow what's what's this guy doing i'm like this this is just really weird so anyway they make their way over to my buddy's tree stand they're making kind of a loop around the hunt camp and they go by my buddy's stand first and um and then they're headed right for me i mean directly just right for me 
like, wow, I'm going to get a close up look at this, you know, and see what it really is, what's going on here. So they have to cross the, the, uh, the road to get to my side of where I'm hunting. I was hunting on one side of the road and, and my buddy was hunting in the actual uh, hunt camp. And so they came towards me and, and when, as they went across the road, this being is running in that same position. But as soon as he gets across the road, he goes back into crawling mode because it's thick palmettos where I'm hunting. Okay. So then I'm looking at him. Of course, I'm 15 feet up in a tree. So I get this downward view of the way he's crawling. Okay. And what I wanted to just, this is what I wanted to describe is the way he was crawling. Um, it looked like, well, first of all, when he was crawling, his arms were straight out in front of him, like Superman, you know, that kind of look. And his legs were tucked underneath him. You couldn't see his legs. But his, his body motion was a sway back and forth. So you, you could actually see his body went like that, like a snake, like almost like a snake motion where his hips from his waist just spun one way and then spun the next when he took another step. I don't know if that makes any sense. Mm, like rotating. Well, his whole back half went like when he took a step to the left, his whole back end went to the left. Oh, and when he took a step to the right, he, it, it swayed back. So his back, his front stayed straight forward, going towards the deer with his arms straight out. But the back end of him twisted in like, like a snake motion. Or like a fishtail? Yeah, like a fishtail. Exactly. No jumping, just moving. No, no jumping. And it looked to me, I'm pretty sure... He wasn't using his hands to help him move forward. Right. He was just using them to part the palmetto bushes so he could move forward. Wow. So he had his arms straight out, just parting like this in the palmettos. He wasn't using them to support himself. And, and you don't hear too many people describing, uh, this motion that I'm describing. That's why I wanted to go over it. Uh, really, really bizarre. Uh, and at that point, I'm thinking in my head, oh man, what the heck is this? You know, because remember, I didn't remember anything that happened in the 80s. Right. So I'm, I'm looking at this all new again. And I'm definitely thinking, wow. Guy. Yeah, definitely not a guy. And what turned out to be I thought was black clothing was hair. Okay. And then he, he had this hair that kind of swept back and then he had like a mane on the back of his head and down his neck, down his back, just a little bit, like a, like a foot or two down the back of his back and it tapered. And, and finally, you know, at the end tapered down to, to nothing. But it was like a mane. Uh, that's best I can describe it. It was longer than the rest of his hair. And I could see his head. His head, as he was crawling, was cocked back to where he was looking straight forward. Um, so that was another thing that looked really, really weird. Because when you're crawling like that, you know how it's hard to... You know, if it was a human crawling, you would see that he would be having a hard time keeping his head because of our, the way our neck moves. But it seemed to, for him, his head, his neck almost swiveled back. Uh, I, I don't know. It was really bizarre looking. So I could see his face was a lighter color from that downward angle mm. than the rest of his body. 
so I'm, I'm thinking to myself, wow, I'm discovering some kind of new creature here, you know, that I'd never seen before. I'd never seen anything like this before. So I'm thinking to myself, I sure would love to see what this thing looks like. But I'm also thinking if I turn his attention towards me, that he's going to forget about the deer and come after me, climb the tree and rip me out of my tree stand or something. I don't know. You know, I was having all kinds of panic attacks at that moment. Legit. That's legit um, to, to feel that way, for sure. Well, uh, they were coming by me. They got about 20, 25 yards from me. And I I don't know if I voluntarily or just involuntarily, I let a, a gasp out. And that's all it took. This thing stood up immediately, spun with all, you know, its shoulders and everything spun. It just didn't spin its head. It actually stood up straight and spun its upper body towards me and locked eyes with me. Like it seemed like instantly. I mean, it was that fast and we stared at each other. Well, it felt like to me, like five minutes, but probably only like 10 seconds, you know, but we locked eyes and I had a full, uh, camo mask on. So, you know, uh, trying to be, you know, <laughs> in camo and he's, he locks eyes. Anyway, when we lock eyes, I get a huge panic attack and my heart's about to jump out of my chest and, and I, I see tunnel vision to his face. So it's, it, it's almost like gray all around except for his face. It was, I've never had anything like it. I guess the adrenaline in my system is what caused that tunnel vision. So anyway, I'm looking at him and he's got these like big eyes, uh, dark brown, no whites that I could see. Uh, not much hair on his face, a little bit of hair on his chin and around his, the sides of his you know, jawline. Uh, and then all of a sudden he, he gives me a snarling look. In other words, he opens his mouth real wide and I could see all of his teeth. And he gives me that kind of sideway, like, like a snarl, like not happy to see me kind of look. Okay. Mm -hmm. And his mouth is huge. I mean, absolutely the biggest mouth ever seen in my life at that point. And his teeth were square. They were big, square. They were, I don't know, three to five times bigger than a normal human. You know, and they were square. And on his right side, he had one that was chipped off diagonally. Um, so a big chunk of his tooth was missing. That's how that's how good of a look I got at this guy's how, face. How close? How close was he? Like I said, no farther than twenty five yards. No farther. I you mean, got your YouTube your YouTube app open, Kevin. We're getting a little, no. little a little bit of feedback from you. I don't know. Is it? Am I coming through your speakers as well as your headphones? No, I don't have anything open. I don't know why we're getting that? Okay, it's gone now. Yeah, it's kind of wild again, doesn't it? I don't know. Yeah, happened last time. It's weird. I don't know. Maybe it's Streamyard. Who knows? <clears throat> Sorry. That's Continue. Right. Twenty-five. Yeah. You said twenty-five yards. Yeah. Yeah. It, if that, feet, maybe twenty. Close. Yeah, it was close. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm looking right at the face and I'm freaking out, and it's giving me this snarl, which. To today, I, when I think of it, it it it, it uh, gives me chills. You know, uh -huh. yeah, it was pretty eerie. So anyway, luckily he went back to chasing the deer. You know, he, after looking at me for who knows how long, it probably was about ten seconds. I, I'm gonna say, maybe a little bit long more. Enough. 
anyway, so he goes back to chasing the deer and, and I'm freaking out and I'm trying to control myself, my breathing and everything, uh, trying to stay still, trying not to fall out of the tree stand, all that good stuff. <laughs> So uh, a few minutes later, I hear those deer screaming. So they they were breakfast, apparently. That's what I'm gathering. Right. Now, what I wanted to say about that, too, that I haven't put out there uh, to date, is where I heard that those deer screaming, carrying on after, after he chased me, or after he looked at me and they continued on. That's right where I saw those lights that night that I told you about in the Mm eighties. And that's where I got my opinion that that's where they, I don't know, at least stay some of the time. I'm not saying they live there year round or whatever, but you think about it there. If they wanted to be hidden, what a better place than right across the road from a hunt camp where nobody's going to hunt ever. I mean, who's ever going to hunt, you know, in right there at the hunt camp, just us crazy bow hunters. Right. So think about, you know, what's this, the old saying It's the best place to hide is in clear sight, you know, that kind of mentality. So it almost makes sense. But anyway, that's where I heard them meet their fate was right over where that, where the lights were in that tree that night. So I'm sitting there calming down, you know, trying to, you know, get my breathing back and my heart back and pound my heart back in my chest. <laughs> and, you know, I'm trying to like get my head around what I saw. And 30 minutes later, so it must have been about nine o'clock, I see movement off. I guess that would have been about three or four four o'clock from my position at on the tree stand. So to my right, I see movement and I see what I think is him. I mean, it looked like his shape come popping out of the woods and then walked over next to the wood line and turned around and stood there and looked at me. What felt like 30 minutes, but it had, it was at least 10 minutes. He stood there looking at me. And at that point, I could just see his outline. You know, I could see his his height, his outline. You know, at that distance, he looked like uh, a man in black again, if that makes sense, Mm -hmm. because I couldn't get any detail because he was too far away. Yeah. Um, But he stood there looking at me for at least 10 minutes. And I'm like, what the heck is he doing? You know, what is this? And at that point, you know, I'm trying to convince myself it's a guy, you know, so I'm not freaking, you know, freaking out. Try to keep myself calm. I'm like, what's this guy doing? You know, why is he staring at me? And uh, I decided to just play it cool and sit there as still as I could. And... I'm just keeping an eye on this thing the entire time. He's watching me. I'm watching him. And then after about 10, maybe even 15 minutes, it walked back into that thick wood line and disappeared. And I didn't see him again that afternoon or that day until later that night. Um, I'm pretty sure that was him again trying to make a point to me at night. Um, so when anyway, you're talking about when you were in the hammock, when I was in the tent, actually oh, the, tent, okay. the tent at three o'clock in the morning, that oh, was yeah. that same oh, that night uh, when I couldn't sleep and I couldn't sleep because I couldn't get this being's face out of my mind. Uh, that snarl look that he gave me just was like, it, it sent chills all over my body and I'm like, uh, it was a, like a confrontational stare. It was like, 
you know, what are you doing? And I'm not happy you're interrupting me kind of look. Any thoughts on leaving at that point? Well, I, you know, I was just getting to that. I went down to, you know, after uh, we usually got down at 10 o'clock. So at 10 o'clock, I go down to the hunt camp and my buddy's already there. And I sat there. He's sitting there with his, like his hand, his head in his hands, which, you know, I guess I can tell why he was pretty freaked out. So I, I went and I grabbed the chair and I sat next to him. And I said, did you catch all of that? Did you see that guy in black? And he said, yes. And I tried to talk to him about it and he told me to stop. And I said, why? And I, you know, you know, we need, we should talk about this. And he says, Kevin, don't ever mention this again. I don't want to talk about it. And that's the most stern that I've ever, that I ever saw the guy with me. I mean, we never had arguments, you know, we were, you know, we just never did. I'm pretty easy going and he was, you know, we were friends for almost 20 years. So, I mean, we never got, we never had words like that. You don't seem like a very argumentative guy. No, no. And when I like heard him say that, I knew what, what the deal was because he's very superstitious, you know, and it, it freaked him out. Okay. But so I kind of let him lead the way. And at that time he was okay with staying. Well, we ended up leaving the next day, <laughs> but not just because of that. We had other things happening, and uh, eventually it was it was too much, I think, and we ended up uh, leaving. Not the next day, the day after. I would say the day after next. So that night we had the three o'clock visit, where it's this thing is banging around in our campground and I get up and I look and I see you know that it's something out there running around and it, it's definitely bipedal you know it's, it's not you know it's not a deer and it, it luckily it leaves pretty quick I mean it was only there maybe a minute and then left but enough to freak me out. I didn't sleep at all that night. So the next day when we got up, I mentioned it to him and he didn't, he didn't say anything, but I think now I think back at it, I think he heard it, heard it too. Cause he was a fairly light sleeper. Usually, you know, we've had other incidents in the middle of the night where he's nudging me, you know, Hey, you got your, you got your pistol with you, you know, in other circumstances, you know. So I, I know that he slept fairly light. So when I looked over at him, uh, I guess he was pretending to sleep is what I'm guessing. Because this thing was fairly loud out there. So anyway, um, he did seemed he, okay. Sorry, uh, Kevin, did he, did he ever experience any of the speaking or, or that he admitted to or not? Do you think he, maybe he's dealing with something like that as well and not being able to to share it i uh, i don't know what his experiences were other than uh he he stopped bringing the hammock and he bought that hammock just to go out there and hunt so for him to to not bring the hammock was now that i look back at it was a clear sign that something happened out there that he didn't like because mm. uh, uh, there's no way. I, I And when he first said, no, I'm not bringing the hammock, because when we were packing, I said, where's the hammock? Because he's a creature of habit. You know, he always was. So he says, oh, no, I, I don't think I want to bring it. I said, well, what are you talking about? You know, why? He says, oh, it's just not worth it. You know, it's not worth it. I don't want to hassle it. And that's just, that just wasn't him. He so wanted the now, safety of that super, super thin tent. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You so do I, feel I, safe I, in there. I don't know what that is, the deal is there, but you do feel it. <clears> yeah. 
Yeah, I guess so. So anyway, I kind of let him decide, you know, whether we're staying or going. And he seemed okay with staying at least that that night. But we had the 3 o'clock incident. And then we were uh, target practicing after our morning hunt uh, with our bows out and right next to my truck. You know, kind of parallel with my truck, we had a lane set up and a target set up for our uh, bows, and we're practicing, you know. Just something we did a lot of times, it's just to keep, you know, keep up on our skills. So anyway, we're practicing, and, uh, you know, we he would go and I would go, and we would both go to the target and pull our arrows, right? So I went up to the the target. I pulled mine first. I stand off to the left of the target, and he comes up and he pulls his arrows out, and we're talking as he's pulling his arrows out. And so I'm facing my truck, and past my truck was the tent, and then past my tent, our tent was a row of three or four uh, pine trees that looked like they were planted that way because they were spaced evenly. Uh, there was about four of them in a row, which was, you know, unusual. And they were all about the same height, like somebody had planted four of them in a row. So anyway, that's that was about 30 yards, I'd say, from our target that we were practicing on. I look over that direction and I see movement and I see a face sticking out from the tree over back behind there, back our 30 yards away, past our truck, past my tent, in those trees. All right. So I look away and I look over because I'm like freaking out that I'm seeing a face. And I look over and I, and this is where the facial expression. Uh, question came in. This is the answer to that. Okay. Um, it did seem to have a smile on his face. Um, cause I got a really good look at the face peeking behind the tree. Um, it didn't seem to buy, um, mind that I was looking at it for whatever reason. Uh, but when my buddy went to look at it, it went behind the tree. So it was, it was like, that being didn't want my buddy seeing it, but didn't mind me looking at it. And this kind of falls in line with what you had experienced before with them telling you that they thought he was just not a good guy, right? Right. And not only that, but I think I mentioned in the last show that I was on that I figured out after I got my memories back that that was the mother peeking me peeking at us right and uh i believe she was smiling at me like remember me kind of thing you know because we went over there we tried i said hey let's sneak up on whoever this is and confront whoever this is you know so we went back behind my vehicle and then we from the end of my vehicle we ran past my tent over to those lines of trees and of course nothing was there nothing but the the point i'm trying to make on that is i'm looking at the height of where this face was because in order for it to look at us from that area it had to look like over my tent and over my truck both for me to get that view of its face. So I'm looking at the tree and I'm like, at the time I'm thinking, wow, whoever that was had to have climbed that tree to get that kind of angle to look at us. Cause it was, tw it had to be 12 feet up where that, that face was because there's no way that any lower than that, it, it wouldn't have been able to see us from that angle. That's just that massive. Makes, if that makes any sense. It, yeah. Well, I mean, you confirmed I, this already. Yeah. 
yeah, but it was my my truck was an obstacle, and the tent was an obstacle for it to look over. So, and I and I could see the head over all of that. If if that makes sense, it was so it had to be twelve feet. And then now that I know, the memories came back. The the mother was twelve feet tall, so she wasn't climbing the tree. She didn't have to. Now, when when just, did that happen, Kevin? When when did when did you get was, these memories back? What and where were you? I was watching that video. Uh, I actually looked it up uh, here after the show because you were asking me what it, what what video that was. And it's called uh, Possible Bigfoot Sighting in Central Oregon. That's the name of the video on YouTube. So if you want to look that up, that's the name of the video. We'll see if YouTube. we can find it and put a link in the yeah. description. Yeah. Because Just tell it, me again. Sorry. Just tell me again. It's called uh, Possible Sighting, Bigfoot Sighting. Okay. In Central Oregon. That's the name of it. And, and what was it uh, about that that made you, that made all this stuff just rush back to you? Well, it was a video of, it looked like two couples camping next to an open field. And in that open field was somebody out there running around or walking, actually, walking fast. And then getting down on all fours and then getting back up and walking fast and going back and forth with this movement. And from that distance and that light, because it was getting dark, I guess it was dusk. Um, in that light, it looked like a man dressed in all black or a ghillie suit. One of the, one of the two. And so the, one of the, the guys were arguing about, they were kind of discussing what that could be they're saying what is that and one guy says it it's a yeti man it's a yeti and the other guy says uh i think it's a, a guy in a in a ghillie suit just messing with us and that the way that it was walking in the way that you could just see that it was like a black figure and the way it was going down on all fours just brought that memory back to me of that 95 incident um, just something about that made it all come back. You know, it's amazing how the mind works. I don't know what else to say about that. It just kind of released all of that. Yeah. And if you haven't, uh, let me just kind of backtrack a little bit and just let everyone know that it hasn't heard go to last Sunday when Kevin was on and you'll be able to hear the full story of when he experienced these these uh, beings speaking to him. And this is what we're referring to when, when we were asking when it came back, because you had repressed all these things. And I think we actually had a psychologist comment about how people do repress these types of things uh, on there. I, that I remember we do read all the comments. If you comment, we're going to read them. I, sometimes I respond <clears throat> to some of you guys. Sorry, I had to clear my throat again. Well, one of the reasons why you do this, I know, is for awareness That's right so people are aware so if anything like this happens to somebody they're not going to freak out they're going to say oh that's what i've been hearing about you know that's the hope that's Absolutely. that's that's kind of your goal i know um and i appreciate you doing that because nobody else there's a lot of people that want to just sweep this kind of uh, material under the rug i mean the whole mind speak thing is, I know it's bizarre, but it's out there. I've actually had several people, one just recently that had told me their story, but left out the weird, strange, where they had heard something in their head or seen something. In this case, it was seeing something that just didn't add up. Right. Call me, call me back and tell me, still don't want to come on the show. Understandable. But I mean, right that's why we're here that's why i put that phone number out there for people to call if you need someone yeah. to talk to that's going to believe you you just want to get it out and get it off of you but real quick 
just to let everyone know, if you do have a story, it doesn't matter how significant you think it is. It's all significant. If it's something minor or just something you couldn't explain that you want to come on here and talk about that you think might have been and you're just looking for confirmation. I think that's what everyone is doing, looking for some confirmation because it just makes you feel that much better that you're not crazy. You know, someone else has happened, yeah. it's happened to them. So, yeah, this yeah. again, yeah. confirmation. So you can call, email me, bigfootodyssey at gmail.com. Um, we'll book you. Now, I had uh, some other stuff that night well, after the tree peaking. We spent one more night, and then we left the next morning, okay? But that night was was pretty bizarre, too, all right? And I wanted to, to go over that. We were, after our evening hunt, we sat around the, we made a fire, and we would sit around the campfire and talk about the day's events and stuff. And uh, after we made the fire, we were getting our chairs situated and stuff. And and um, I felt something hitting me, you know. And and I said, hey, man, do you feel something hitting you once in a while? He says, yeah, man, are you throwing pine needles at me? I said, no, I'm getting pine needles thrown at me, too. And, uh, or it feels like somebody's throwing pine needles. So we were looking around and we couldn't see anything, of course. Um, so that's, it was a little freaky, you know, but can you imagine what it would take to throw pine needles any kind of distance? I don't, I don't even know how they, they did it. Try throwing a pine needle one day. You might be able to get what three, four feet out of it. So I don't know how they were making pine needles go that distance, unless they were. They couldn't have been that close. There was nothing that close. The the tree peaking incident tree was probably the closest tree. I'll tell you how we used to do it. And you can take your three pine needles. Got three needles on it. One that right. you get. And you just kind of, you don't braid them, you just kind of twist them a little bit and you put in your thumb like this and you just flick it straight out and you can make it go 20, 30 feet. So really, that's how we used to do it all the time. Wow. I mean, I'm from the pine belt. That's all we have were pine trees to play with. So, Well, whoever it was, was accurate. I mean, I don't think they were doing it to hurt us because they were hitting our arms, you know, and our legs, you know, that kind of thing. Get one of those in the eye, it's not going to be good. Yeah, well, the, we never got one that close, so I don't think they were trying to hurt us. So anyway, we're we're sitting at the fire, kind of discussing that, and then all of a sudden, we see eye shine in the far part of the uh, campground, right where it goes to thicker grass. You know, so it's the edge of the the, the hunt camp, and we were facing that through the fire. It was off to the left, I guess about 11 o'clock from our position. We were you know, with red eye shine. And we're like, you know, where's this eye shine coming from? Do you see that eye shine? And we're talking about the eye shine and we're like, where, where is this eye shine? There's no lights, you know. I mean, other than our fire, campfire, which is... 50 yards, 60 yards from this eye shine, at least. Uh, but it was red glowing eyes. About, I'd say about four feet, five feet off the ground. Um, and we looked really at it. Apart. I mean, yeah, they how, were really, how, really how far, far, how far apart. How far away, too? How far away? Well, like I said, about 60 yards, 60, 60 yards. maybe 75, somewhere in that area. Right at the edge of the the hunt camp from us, and the width of the hunt camp wasn't that wide. It was more uh, lengthways going with the road than it was widthwise. So I guess the campground was about seventy-five yards deep, and probably a hundred and fifty yards wide, uh, going along with the road, lengthwise. I, I would say. 
Well, I know so, this. It's not normal for a wild animal to just sit and watch you. That's just not right. a normal thing for any wild animal to do. A deer might do it for a few minutes, but then once they recognize you or you, they, they know you're recognizing them, they're out of there. It's just not a, this is, this is something that's to me intelligent and aware and focused on you. And right. Predatory right. behavior. Right. So we, we try to explain it away as usual. Maybe it's spider eyes or, you know, we didn't know, <laughs> we didn't know what the heck, you know, what was going on, but it was, they were spread apart about, I'd say, I'm guessing about eight inches. So it was weird oh that way too. It wasn't like, um, normal with either, you know, it wasn't mine. Were, Daniela's about two and three quarter center to center. Yeah. Not very much. Right. Right. So, yeah, uh, it was weird. So we're just sitting there talking about it and trying to figure it out. And, uh, just had an overall weird feeling uh, around the camp. It was extra quiet, kind of a feeling of being watched, you know, it, you had the, it had that feeling of being watched. So the, the next morning he had enough and he says, we got to get out of here. And we didn't talk at all on the way home, which was very, you know, unusual for us. And like I said before, I don't believe that man ever went hunting again. From what I hear from his family, you know, we never hunted again. Sounds well, like he yeah. broke up your friendship. Well, no, but something else ruined that friendship. Uh, and that was another thing I wanted to say was something that I, he did to me that I never would have thought to do to any other human being on the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it wasn't a good ending to that relationship. And uh, we haven't spoken in 22 years. So that tells you how bad sorry, it was. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. I was really uh, disappointed in him and I, I just couldn't believe he did it. What he did. Well, maybe the, you have some foreshadowing there with the Sasquatch. Yeah. Telling Maybe you they were right. They thought he was, yeah. yeah. Apparently they were. Yeah. I don't want to go into the details, just that sure. I never would have thought to do what he did. Does that make sense though? That he's not a, a good man. I mean, from yeah. what they said. It, I mean, that's possible. I mean, maybe that's what they were meaning by that. I don't know. It wasn't a good thing what he did. <laughs> it wasn't a good thing at all. So, uh, and it's something like I just can't believe he did it. I can't believe he did this. Well, was there anything else that you wanted to touch on before we get to some questions no, in the chat here? I've got a couple other encounters, but we could save those for. I mean, not in Apalachicola and other places, but we don't need to go into that tonight. Maybe we could do that some other time. Yeah, that's fine. I've just I've got to go. If Daniela wants to stay, that's just, that's all up to you guys. But we definitely want to take some questions. I know there, that there are a lot of people that watched last week's show that probably have some questions for you. Please put those in caps for us. We appreciate you very much. While you guys are doing that, I'll just let everybody know that I'm leaving West Texas, which is where I am right now, on the 20th. I'll be heading down to South Florida to Mark Zasky's house. I'll be staying there for however long it takes about a week, I think, to finish the 168 hours films. Um, there, we're along in them. I don't, I don't know how far along because I don't know how long they're going to be, but at least three episodes, possibly four. And then if we have time, we'll put together blooper, sizzle reel or whatever for you guys. But those are coming at the end of this month. <clears throat> and once we, uh, I'm ordering new shirts for members. We're going to have Sunday Encounter shirts, and then below the Sunday Encounter logo is going to say, and we're live, because I always say that. And uh, and Danielle also says it when I'm not here. And we have, on Friday nights, it's this thing that I started doing, and it, I don't know, it's kind of turned into a thing. Brad asked me how I'll do it, and I say I was okay, but I got over it. So that's what we're going to put for the Friday 
uh, late show t-shirts that you're going to put the late show logo, Bigfoot Odyssey late show logo. And then we're going to put, I was doing okay, but I got over it. Uh, should be a good eye catcher for people. So that's what we're, you guys will, you members will have a choice of uh, what you want to get whenever we get to your names. So. Cool. Uh, well, we've got another 10 minutes, haven't we? That's it. Are you, are you staying for 10 yeah. minutes or do you need to go now? You're okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah no, okay. no, I'm, I'm good for this. Oh, you're good. All right, cool. Uh, Larry Metzner says, do you think he was able to catch up with the deer or did he drive the deer into the, into the big foot feet? So yeah. what... I, I think he could have caught them at any time. I think he was driving them to the breakfast table. <laughs> That's what I think. I think that, that the rest of the family were waiting for him. That's just my opinion. I, yeah. I mean, that's the feeling I got from the whole thing. I don't know why these things popped up into my head. Just sometimes you have these thoughts, don't you, about Sasquatch and what they do. And when you talked about the style and the teeth and how you thought about it later, do you think Sasquatch kill with their mouths? Or do you think they just kill with their hands? I think they kill with their hands. That's what I think. Not like bears, but, I guess, you know, will grab mm -hmm. you and then bite. But most animals might go to bite you. Uh, I think they've got some pretty thick nails and, you know, heavy-duty nails they could probably tear anything up with. Yeah. Yeah. What exactly. a bear doesn't have is an opposable thumb. You know, and you're talking about, you know, a grip, especially with some power. That's probably the quickest, most efficient, you know. I'm sure they don't play with their food like cats do. <laughs> cats are evil. Yeah, no, I don't think so either. It's pretty much scarf okay. and go. Um, uh, but, right. Thank you, me. Thanks to me. Yeah, and thanks, thanks yeah. to all the super stickers. I didn't want to interrupt earlier when we had those super stickers from Mr. Lighthouse. Um, I'm trying to remember who all it was. Long Island Bigfoot put one up there. Uh, I've been putting was, Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to remember. Thank you all very much for that, by the way. Um, BF Buddy saying, do you still hunt there? Do you go back there? No. I, I have hunted after that in other places. I went to Kentucky a couple years. Uh, some, a friend of mine had some land up there. So I, I hunted in Kentucky a few year, a couple years, and I've hunted in Florida, you know, around the area, you know, for a few years. But, um, you know, I don't hunt as much anymore. I've got, uh, you know, family, and, and they've got me wrapped up in the other things. Um, my kids expressed feelings about starting to hunt, and uh, I've got uh, mixed feelings about doing Imagine that. So. Uh, I've got two boys. Um, they're 21 and 19 now. And uh, I, I do have mixed feelings about it. I don't, I, you know, I would love to have them experience some of the stuff that I did, but they don't believe um, anything I've said about uh, this subject. So if they were to run into something, they would probably be scarred for life. Did, uh, you, tell him, did you tell them everything about your encounter? No, no I, I don't talk to them about... Uh, the, the mind speak stuff they just they don't get it in the first place okay uh, matter of fact i don't talk to them much about it at all uh, so you don't think that just just saying something to them if they were to be in a situation where they have something they couldn't explain or a weird experience that that they would that they would go there uh i would hope so but i worry about them sure uh, kids you know, I worry about them getting freaked out. You know, it, it it's scarring them because it does. It happens to a lot of people. It happened to me. Yeah. yeah it takes a yeah. long time to get through. But yeah. my situation, I was clueless until I saw it. And it's yeah. that, that's what I think. It is yeah. that sudden moment of realization that really yeah. has an effect on you. And then, of course, everything else that floods back on you that you had experienced before. And then you end up mad at yourself for explaining it away. Well, I did anyway. There you go. And so shout out to Yancey Scott. Club. Thank you for joining. <laughs> well, 
why we're here. Yeah. That's why we do this. Mm. It's not for the Sasquatch. It's for the people that run into them. Yeah, I, I still do outdoor stuff. I mean, I, I camp. You know, I just do it more glamping style these days. <laughs> yeah, bring the house with you. Yeah, I got an RV, so I, I do yeah, the RV thing. So that's what I need yeah. when I'm camping in my house. <laughs> I got the house on wheels, so yeah, I enjoy. I do it. Stuff. You know, I I really enjoyed uh, my hunting years, but now that I remember everything, I I just rather not go there anymore. To be honest with you, Ed. I'll stick to my glamping. <laughs> shame, though, isn't it? It's a real shame. It, it kind of is because I would love to get my kids out there, but, you know, and I, I just worry about it. Yeah. I just do. Yeah. Yancy, Yancy, of course. Yancy has, has something here. It says, take them hunting. It has to keep my boss out of trouble. I'm, I'm sure that means boss thing. Um, yeah. So have you thought about that? You taking them? Would they let you? Taking them hunting? Yeah. Yeah, they they probably would. My my wife wouldn't be too happy about it. <laughs> she hears, you know, she's she's not really into this either. Even though uh, we have an we had an incident where she was involved with it, so she I think she realizes it's it's there but doesn't want to talk about it. It scares her. So I really don't have anybody to talk to about it. That's why I appreciate this, this, this show. Being able to we, get it out. We appreciate you, man. We appreciate you coming because we don't have a show without people like you. If you want to call it a show, a show. No, I mean, lack of a better word. I, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, you know, I, I just, I, I do appreciate it. You know, it's, it's definitely cathartic for me to get this off my chest and talk about it. That's good. It's what matters. Yeah, definitely. Um, and sorry, I just need to say this. The members only show are advertised in the community tab on YouTube, on our YouTube page. That's it. There's, it's, it's not that hard to find anybody. Um, just go and check out the community tab, and as soon as I post them, they should come up um, on your phone when you're looking at YouTube. So I don't know, I don't know how people are missing them, but um, well, sometimes you, YouTube doesn't send out notifications. There's not anything we can do about that. So, no, but when you look at when you go onto YouTube, it'll come up. It'll right. come up on your on your homepage as you're looking through. Should, <clears throat> sometimes there. Yeah, okay. It, it should, but for some people it doesn't. And yeah. I think I think the issue there is if you're not you just because you're subscribed and you've got all notifications turned on, if you if you go a few videos without watching the ones put out, they just won't send you one. I mean, it's just how YouTube does it sometimes. But you can always go if you're a member, you can always go to our community tab and you can find them there. We usually announce in advance when we're going to have the the members only lives. But you can you can, uh, we don't, you don't have to be there live to get uh, the swag anymore. We're just going down the list and giving stuff away. So you can always go back and watch those. Had a really good one with Christopher Noel. Excellent show. Talked a lot about the 168. Um, you guys really going to enjoy it for sure. But uh, hey, I think we've come to the end of our rope here, haven't we? Yeah. We're going to have Kevin on again, yep. aren't we? And um, yes, we're going to book Kevin again for his other encounters for sure. Yeah, Sounds not next good. Sunday though. Sounds good. I was glad to to wrap that up, and uh, hope it makes sense now. Yeah, uh, definitely. Let's see we got. Go back. Sorry, I'm. So, I was just going to say we've got uh, JC on Friday the thirteenth with me and Brad. Some amazing things. That's nine o'clock p.m. Central Friday the thirteenth. Uh, very fitting to be on that. And then next Sunday's Erica Loggins is going to be here with us with some pretty amazing stuff. So we we've managed to book some uh, some really some really great uh, people that are coming forward with their experiences. And again, if you want to come forward with your experience, you don't have to do it here. You don't even have to come on here if you just want to get it out. 
go to our website, bigfootodyssey.us. You will see a phone number on the bottom left of the home page. You can contact me there. And uh, if you just want to tell me what happened to you, we can't, we're not going to tell people we're going to be here for them and not be here. I answer that. I answer that number every single time it rings. So you can text it, you can call it. Uh, and I'll talk to you about what happened. Try to help you out best I can. Cool. So there we go. All right. Well, great um, show, everybody. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Danielle, what you got next? Um, I was going to have Kevin on next week on in existence, but it's, I'm going to have to just move the date again, Kevin. Uh, okay. Probably going to be on the um, 28th is the, the, if you're free for that. I'm going to put three different guys together that are experiencing speaking Sasquatch, whether it's mind speak or hearing it literally. Uh, and hopefully we can come together and share the experiences and the differences maybe, or maybe connect to something. I don't know, but I thought it'd be a good idea to, to put some people together who are experiencing the, exactly the same thing and, and see where we go from there. So, so sorry, my, my dog is going crazy tonight. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be an interesting show. So, but we'll be we'll be back on Wednesday. We've got um, Bigfoot and on, haven't we? Uh, Connor coming on this Wednesday. Uh, yes, Connor. Connor. Bigfoot. Bigfoot I got to get a hold of him. Bigfoot. I've Anon. got. Yeah. He's been in touch. Yep. So. Okay, you already got it. Uh, Victor. So the videos coming are for members only. No. We only do a members only about twice a month, and it's something extra that we do. Uh, what you get here, the Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday shows are free for everybody. We just do the members only content because people are gracious enough to join. So we do something extra for them and then give away uh, the stuff that we buy with the members only money. We give it all right back. So that's it. That's it. But yeah. thank you. Thank you, Kevin, again yeah. for coming. And uh, thank you. Can't, can't wait to get you back and uh, talk about the other experiences you've had. Daniela, yeah. fan, fantastic uh, job as always. Uh, hopefully we'll see you guys this Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Central with Bigfoot Anon, Connor fin Finley, I think is his last name. Yeah. Yes, Connor Finley will be here. And then Friday the 13th, Brad and I are going to be here with JC. So, All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody.